It's a clear evening at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, and on your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 as it prepares for its 7.10 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. My name is Shiva, and I'm a Falcon Integration and Test Engineer here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, and welcome to our launch coverage of the JCSAT-18 Pacific One mission. Now today we're launching a single high throughput communication satellite with two payloads aboard or two sets of communication equipment. One of the payloads is for Sky Perfect JSAT and the other for Pacific. We'll hear a little bit more about that later on in today's coverage. Now at this point we're just under uh, T minus 12 minutes and counting with all systems currently go. So let's take a closer look at Falcon 9 on the pad. Starting from the base of the rocket and working our way up, we have the first stage, atop that the second stage, and finally at the very top are our payload failings, bearings, which encapsulate the satellite. Now the first stage makes up the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle, and it accelerates the rocket from the launch pad to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere using its nine Merlin engines. Today's first stage is a little bit sooty, and that's because it previously flew two Dragon resupply missions earlier this year, CRS-17 and CRS-18. Today makes its third flight. We'll be attempting to recover this first stage on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which is currently stationed about 350 nautical miles off the east coast of Florida. Now, above the black composite inner stage sits our second stage, and its job is to carry the satellite into orbit. The second stage will separate from the first stage about two and a half minutes into flight, and then it'll ignite its Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine. For today's mission, MVAC will ignite twice to carry the JCSAT-18 Pacific One satellite to a geosynchronous transfer orbit. The first ignition should happen shortly after stage separation, and the second about 27 and a half minutes into flight. Finally, the very top of the rocket is our nose cone structure called the payload fairing. It's 17 feet in diameter, and it protects the satellite from the atmospheric forces, heating, and contamination that occur during liftoff and ascent. Once we're at the edge of space, we'll jettison the fairing halves back to the Earth about three and a half minutes into the flight. Now, we are attempting to recover both the fairing halves today on our recovery vessels, Miss Tree and Miss Chief. Our hope is to catch one of the halves in Miss Tree's net and the other in Miss Chief's. We will not have live coverage of the fairing recovery attempt, but please stay tuned to our social media for updates as we receive them. So with that, let's take a closer look at the rocket and the satellite. Hi, I'm Kate Tice, a Senior Program Reliability Engineer here at SpaceX. We're currently tracking no issues as we count down to our 7.10 p.m. Eastern liftoff time. Falcon 9 rolled out to the pad with the JCSAT-18 Pacific One satellite around 2 a.m. local time and went vertical at 12.30 p.m. In fact, this is the fastest turnaround we've had to date, just 11 days and roughly seven hours since our last launch from Space Launch Complex 40. At T minus one hour, the chief engineer held a technical poll, and at T minus 38 minutes, the launch director held a propellant load launch go, no go poll. Everything was a go, so F9 began prop loading three minutes later at T minus 35 minutes. For our propellants, we use oxidizer and fuel. The oxidizer is super chilled liquid oxygen, also called blocks, and the fuel is rocket grade kerosene or RP1. Second stage is fully loaded with its fuel, while first stage is on track to complete fuel load about six minutes before launch. Liquid oxygen is loading currently, uh, liquid oxygen is currently underway uh, on both stages. Like I mentioned before, it's super chilled liquid oxygen. Lowering the LOX's temperature increases its density and gives Falcon 9 increased efficiency. We want to keep the LOX as cold as possible while Falcon 9 is still on the ground, so we don't complete liquid oxygen loading until the last couple minutes before liftoff. Falcon 9 uses helium to keep the fuel and liquid oxygen tanks pressurized throughout flight while propellant depletes. This also helps the RP-1 and LOX flow correctly into the Merlin engines without any air bubbles. Helium load began before the webcast went live and we'll continue to top it off until 90 seconds before launch. In about 45 seconds, engine chill procedures will begin. We'll be opening the pre-valves between the first stage propellant tanks and the nine Merlin engines to allow a little bit of that cold liquid oxygen to flow into the turbo pumps. 
This will bring the hardware down to a temperature close to that of the super chilled propellant that will be flowing through at liftoff. We're now at T minus seven minutes and 20 seconds. The vehicle is healthy and we're currently working no issues. The spacecraft team transferred the satellite to internal power at T minus 23 minutes, so they're ready for launch and are just monitoring spacecraft telemetry. The range is go, air and sea space has been cleared, the weather is green, and all systems continue to be go for an on-time liftoff of 7.10 p.m. Eastern. Now, as I mentioned earlier, today we're launching a single satellite with two payloads aboard, one for SkyPerfect JSAT and the other for Pacific. SkyPerfect JSAT is one of the largest providers of multi-channel pay TV broadcast services in Japan, operating the largest satellite communications business in Asia. The satellite we're launching today will provide KU band coverage and improve mobile and broadband services for customers in the Asia Pacific region, including the far eastern part of Russia. What the SkyPerfect JSAT group values the most as a satellite operator is to be connected anytime, anywhere. We operate and control geostationary satellites at 36,000 kilometers from the Yokohama Satellite Control Center and two other control centers nationwide. We use geostationary satellites to provide stable communications in the air and sea. In order to provide prompt rescue and support during and after disasters, it is necessary to secure quick communication. Satellite communication is a big asset. In addition, we have partnered with low Earth orbit satellite operators, and from JAXA, we acquired small demonstration satellites. We will enter into the sensing business that collects and uses space data. For image analysis, we provide intelligence to make informed decisions in partnership with Planet Labs Incorporated, Orbital Insight Incorporated, and others. We will continue to take on the challenge of delivering smiles. Space for your smile. Sky Perfect JSAT Group. Now, while this is our third launch for Sky Perfect JSAT, it's our first for Pacific. Pacific is a next-generation broadband satellite operator which provides high-speed, low-cost, reliable broadband to rural areas and suburban areas of the Pacific and Southeast Asia. Today's satellite will connect previously unserved or underserved populations in Southeast Asia and the Pacific Islands with affordable, high-speed broadband. When broadband touches the world, the world changes. Opening up new possibilities for business, communities and people. Broadband is at the heart of everything we do. We connect people with affordable, high-speed satellite broadband. So they can fully participate in the digital world. With 56 high-power beams, our Pacific One satellite reaches 600 million people in 25 nations across Southeast Asia and the Pacific Islands. Based on the Boeing 702 MP platform and supported by advanced technologies, Pacific One delivers fast, efficient and reliable broadband. Because connectivity changes everything. Education, healthcare, social services and business. It drives tourism, fuels economic development and powers critical government services. Our satellite broadband is a catalyst for change improving people's lives, making a lasting difference to families and their communities. We are the heart of broadband. We are Pacific. A big thank you to the teams at SkyPerfect JDSAT and Pacific for all of the hard work they've put into making today's launch possible. We're currently at T minus three minutes from liftoff. Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. The first and second stages are now both fully loaded with a million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. The first stage should finish prop loading. Uh, actually, it just finished prop loading. Uh, and at T minus 60 seconds, you'll hear the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. 
The JCSAT-18 Pacific satellite continues to be healthy. We're tracking no issues on the rocket, weather is looking good, and the, grange, and the range is green. If for some reason we don't get to launch tonight, our backup window is tomorrow at the same time. But right now, right now Falcon 9 is go for launch. Let's listen in to the countdown nets. Stage two, locked load is closed out. And vehicles on internal power. Falcon 9 is in startup. Go for launch. T minus 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Your call is pitching down range. Liftoff of Falcon 9, carrying the JCSAT-18 Pacific Salvador. 1 satellite to geostationary transfer orbit. Stage 1 is now in full power. Everything looks nominal. We're now, oh, you heard the call out for throttling Falcon down. Falcon 9 is supersonic. We're approaching max Q. This is when the rocket goes through the moment of greatest aerodynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. Now the next three events that we have coming up will be in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start one. Main engine cutoff, or as you'll hear it called out, Miko, is where all nine engines of Falcon 9 first MVAC stage shut chill. down. You just heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. Again, that's when we're um, pre-chilling those turbo pumps on the second stage. Now, the MECO will be followed by stage separation, or the separation of the first and second stages. Finally, second engine start, where we'll light the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage, and begin, and, and begin to carry the uh, satellite to its targeted orbit. Let's listen in for those. Miko coming up in 20 seconds. So 
So trajectory is looking good. Engine's still at full power. On the left-hand side of your screen. Miko. Stage set. Stage, there, there we go. go. So there on your screen as the second engine, excuse me, as the second stage engine begins to glow a bright orange, uh, we have confirmation First there. First and second of stage are on a nominal stage, trajectory. Of the stage separation and second engine start one. So on the left hand side of your screen uh, that you'll see stage one as it begins its descent to uh, the drone ship, of course I still love you. You can actually see the lights of Cape Canaveral there in the background. And then on the right-hand side of your screen, like I said, is the second stage. So we're coming up to fairing deployment. We jettison the fairing to shed any unnecessary weight from the second stage. Fairing separation is confirmed. So as you see there, fairing has separated. Again, we are attempting to catch those uh, on our recovery vessels. Uh, but we now have confirmation that uh, second stage is uh, performing nominally, um, and we are looking good so far for today's mission. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. Now, at this point in the mission, the first stage is currently on a parabolic trajectory from the launch site going towards Of Course I Still Love You, which again is about 350 nautical miles off the Florida coast. To successfully land, the first stage will need to do a few things. First, it'll need to reorient so its engines and heat shield enter the Earth's atmosphere first. Then it'll reignite three of its Merlin engines for entry burn to reduce the aerodynamic forces and heating experience as it transitions back into the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Once it's in the atmosphere, the grid fins will take over, guiding the rocket towards, of course, I still love you. When we're above the drone ship, a little after T plus eight minutes into flight, the center Merlin engine will ignite for landing burn, followed by landing leg deploy, and hopefully a gentle touchdown on, of course, I still love you. Entry burn is scheduled to begin in about a minute from now, and it'll last about 20 seconds. First and second stage continue to follow a nominal trajectory. And we're seeing some, some slight plumes on the left. That's the shot from the first stage. We're obviously in the Earth's shadow right now. And on your right side is the second stage MVAC engine continuing its burn. Just about 20 seconds away from entry burn begin. Stage one FTS has saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. And there's relight of those three Merlin vacuum engines. Now, fun fact, JCSAT-14 was actually the first time SpaceX successfully landed a geosynchronous transfer mission on a drone ship. Since then, we've made 43 successful landings between drone ships and on land. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And we're hoping to make tonight's attempt our 47th successful first stage recovery. So if you're just joining us, the first stage just concluded its entry burn. It's on its way back to, of course, I still love you. The second stage is continuing its uh, first engine burn towards a parking orbit. And that's taking the JCSAT-18 Pacific One satellite up into orbit around the Earth to prepare for a second burn happening shortly after. Now landing burn on the first stage and secondary engine cutoff 
number one will happen about the same time. Both of those are scheduled for about T plus eight minutes. Stage one, entry transonic. Second stage is enter terminal guidance. At this point in the mission, the grid fins are guiding the first stage towards, of course, I still love you. We'll hopefully get a, a video feed back here for the first stage shortly. Stage one, landing Marin startup. Stage two, FTS is saved. Go on. Stage one, landing leg deploy. Now, a bunch of things happened there. Secondary engine cut off, number one just happened. The spacecraft is in a good part of it. And Booster 1056 has just recovered it for the third time. This is our 47th successful landing. Congratulations to the whole team here. Now with that, the second stage is currently in orbit and will continue coasting for about 20 minutes until the phasing is correct for secondary engine start number two. We're gonna pause live coverage for now, but we'll be back at about T plus 27 minutes for MVAC engine relight. Until then, please enjoy this animation of the vehicle's progress, and we'll see you back here shortly.
unexpected loss of signal in Bermuda.
Welcome back to the webcast for JCSAT 18 Pacific One. Thanks for hanging out with us while we coasted through there. In case if you're just joining us, we had an on-time launch of Falcon 9 followed by a successful drone ship landing of Stage 1. Stage 2 was confirmed for a good orbit, so we're now approaching second engine start 2. Engine chill has begun on the Merlin vacuum engine and in, um, in about 30 seconds we'll see the second relight of and back. And there on your screen, we can see MVAC as it has reignited. Uh, a little difficulty maintaining the video stream there. It's a little hard uh, to get video from space, as you might imagine. Uh, but we'll bring that back to you uh, as we can provide it. So we're waiting to hear the confirmation of good orbit. Sorry, I misspoke. We are waiting for a second engine cutoff followed by good orbit. Fun fact, stage two is uh, approaching the coast of Africa right now. So it made quite some distance in the little bit of time that we were coasting. Zico. And second engine cutoff as we lose the cheesy orange glow of MVAC there. So we're waiting on that confirmation of Normal good orbit. Nominal orbit insertion for payload deploy. And we have confirmation of good orbit. So now that that's the case, we will be coasting for the next five minutes or so. So we'll be back just before T plus 33 minutes for satellite deployment. Stay tuned.
Signal HPK. Welcome back once again to our webcast for JCSAT 18, Pacific 1. Second stage is currently over Africa, and in about 20 seconds, or yeah, 20 seconds, 20, 15 seconds, we'll have payload deployment. There on your screen, you okay, see well, the deployment of JCSAT 18 Pacific 1. I always love watching as the satellite floats away from second stage out into space. Again, this was geostationary transfer orbit. So with that confirmation of deployment, we will bring our webcast to a close. Thanks for tuning in uh, for our liftoff from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, followed by a successful stage one drone ship landing, and as you just saw, successful satellite deployment. Thank you to our customer, Sky Perfect JSAT, and to Pacific for entrusting us with today's mission. We also want to give a big thanks to the Air Force's 45th Space Wing for providing range safety and to the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing today's launch. Marcus. Now, of course, we also want to thank all of you, our viewers, for tuning in to today's launch. Please follow our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. And until the next time, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. <laughs>